Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Have you ever found yourself obsessing about tiny little imperfections in your studio sound? Then maybe you're asking the wrong question. I've had this show up time and time again. And in particular, I remember uh, a client of mine a few years back who reached out to me actually after having done quite a bit of treatment in his tiny, <laughs> tiny room already. And he was just obsessing about this very shallow dip that was appearing in the frequency response in his room EQ wizard measurements. And no matter what I tried to tell him, he would just not let it go. The fact that he was actually already within kind of the top tier of what you can expect in terms of response, both in time and frequency, it didn't interest him at all. He was just completely focused on this one dip. And it was maybe like a 3 dB shallow dip at, I don't know, 80 hertz or something. It was really not a big deal at all. It's kind of like going to a car dealership and saying, I want a really fast car. That in of itself isn't a particularly good question or a, uh, a good statement to drive your decisions. Because why do you want a fast car? Do you want a fast car to impress your friends? Do you want a fast car to get a better time on the drag strip? Do you want a fast car because you're commuting and you need to get there faster, save time in your day, or maybe because you have to kind of pace through traffic and you want something that is really agile and sprinty. Yeah, those are the right questions to ask. And that will tell you what kind of fast car you want and how fast you actually need it to be. And it's the same with acoustics, just looking at the measurements and then obsessing about some dip or some peak isn't a particularly constructive question to ask because it doesn't give you any results. So today I want to talk about what questions you should actually be asking in order to figure out if you actually need acoustic treatment and what to prioritize. By the end of this video, you'll be able to pinpoint whether you actually need acoustic treatment and how to focus on the things that actually make a difference. But before we dive in, if you need a step-by-step -step process to set up your speakers and listening position perfectly, no matter what room you're in, what shape or size your room actually is, make sure you check out my free phantom speaker test workshop, link in the description. So the first question you want to ask, and the elephant in the room is, does my low end work in my mixes? And in particular, this is, for example, if you work on a mix in your studio, your low end actually sounds fine, but then you take it to your car maybe, and you get massive boomy bass, but then if you take the same mix to your friend's stereo, the bass actually completely disappears. And this is a telltale sign that the low end that your speakers in your room are giving you doesn't actually represent what is happening in the music. So this is a case where you definitely should invest some time in the acoustics, the sound, the acoustic treatment in your studio. The main reason that this is happening is because of standing waves and your particular listening position within the standing wave pattern of your room. So those are the two main things that you need to look at in this particular case. Where is your mixing setup positioned in your room? Is your listening position actually in your room's low end sweet spot? And do you have any damping of standing waves, bass trapping that will help actually tame the low end and reduce the fluctuation, the up and down, the peaks and troughs caused by standing waves. You could also potentially have a speaker boundary interference response, SBIR issue. But actually, if you go through my Phantom Speaker Test course, again, link in the description, you'll know that this isn't something that you actually want to focus on while setting up your speakers and your listening position. It's a problem better addressed later on. In terms of the big bang for the buck, what you need to fix is your listening position and damping standing waves. Those are the big culprits when it comes to an, an inconsistent low end. You could also potentially have a floor reflection issue, but this isn't something that you necessarily need to address. And in fact, there are also not that many ways you can actually do anything about it. 
And in fact, there is science that suggests that you actually need the floor reflection in order to have a proper perception of the stereo image. Funnily enough, that's psychoacoustics, right? Out in nature, we're walking around, our head is above ground, and our ears and our hearing apparatus is actually trained to use the floor reflection to pinpoint what is happening from left to right. So this is, for example, one of the things that you need to be aware of when you're analyzing measurements. You always need to interpret the data that you're looking at with the knowledge of how your brain actually perceives what it's hearing and what is actually needed to get the proper psychoacoustic effects that your ears need and your brain needs in order to build the sound field. So again, the question to ask is, am I getting a consistent and properly balanced low end in my mixes across different playback devices? If that's not the case, then this is a telltale sign that you should invest in the acoustic treatment and just improving the sound in your studio, focusing on listening position placement and damping standing waves. So the next question that you need to ask is, can I hear, and most importantly, judge spaces properly in my mix? So reverbs, delays, but also in terms of mix balance, if something is at the front of the mix or if it's embedded deep inside the mix. If this is something you're experiencing problems with, that is a sign that you don't have a proper stereo image because our brain needs the stereo image in order to construct the space and the stereo sound field in which it hears the placement of elements and the space around it. So in this case, the fix is actually placing your speakers properly or checking the placement of your speakers properly in order to create a proper stereo soundstage. And if you get it right, you should have a phantom center. Basically, it should sound like there's a speaker floating in midair right in front of you if you play mono center panned elements in the mix. And then the sound stage should kind of spread out around that between your speakers. On top of that, reflections might be an issue because they can also mask what you're hearing from your speakers and also dilute the precision of your stereo image. But if you don't have a proper stereo setup, if your speakers aren't optimized for a, st a stereo sound field, then the effect of reflections is basically negligible in comparison. So again, if you can't judge spaces properly, reverbs, delays, positioning of elements in terms of depth, then that's a sign that you need to work on your speaker positioning. So the next question you want to ask is, can I balance my mix properly or are my mixes balanced in terms of mids when I take them outside of the studio? Or am I getting this effect where things sound hollow or lacking punch, lacking presence, lacking forwardness? These are kind of the telltale signs that your mids aren't working properly. And again, this is actually a problem with speaker placement more than anything, because unless you have that stereo sound stage, your brain can't actually construct a solid, let's say, foundation on which the mids get represented. And so in that sense, your speakers are once again kind of lying to you and not actually showing you what's happening. On top of that, again, First order reflections, early reflections, the kind of mirror point reflection idea that has been mentioned all across the internet and by me as well, many, many times. This is when sidewall reflections, floor, ceiling, back wall reflections, when they come in and they mask the direct sound from your speakers, they create comb filters, which are literally like putting a phaser on your mix in a certain, on a certain element and it takes away information. It removes information from the actual sound, which you then obviously can't use to tell what's going on. And that's what's gonna make balancing extremely difficult because you can't hear the individual elements in your mix properly and how they work together. So again, the question to ask here is, are my mixes sounding hollow, lacking punch, lacking presence, forwardness, loudness as well? Then. 
that's a cue that you need to work on your speaker placement. And once that is optimized and you actually have a proper stereo sound field, stereo sound stage and phantom center to then work on reflection control. And then the final question that you really want to ask yourself is, am I getting the high end clarity that I'd like to hear? When you're taking mixes outside of your studio, do my mixes sound present or do they sound harsh? and kind of congested, or do they sound dull and uninteresting? These are signs that your high end isn't being represented properly in your studio. Now, this is as much a mixing skill question as it is an acoustics question, because if there are too many elements in your mix competing for the high end, it can be very difficult to actually get a good sounding high end. So as much as the acoustics, in that case, you actually need to look at cutting high end from your individual elements to the extent that they don't interfere with the elements that actually need to be represented in the high end. It's kind of similar to the low end in that sense. Yeah, You really want only the elements in the high end that need to be there and to the amount that they need to be there. Yeah, So that's a mixing skill question. But on top of that, if you're not getting a proper high end if you can't hear the high end from your speakers. The process is to look at your speaker positioning first and then also check early reflections and make sure you're not getting any reflections from sidewalls, for example, that are messing up and distorting the high end to the extent that you can't actually tell what's going on. So those are actually the main questions that you need to ask to figure out if you need acoustic treatment. Note that I didn't mention anything about using measurements, looking at waterfalls, frequency responses, reverb times. None of this stuff actually matters in the bigger picture when it comes to getting your mixes to translate. Your mixes will tell you what you need to do in your room in order to get them to translate. You just need to ask the right questions. So first of all, is my low end translating properly or is it super inconsistent from one playback system to the next? Can I hear depth and spaces properly? Can I hear depth in the mixes properly? That's the next question you want to ask yourself. Then am I able to balance the mids in my mix properly or does it sound hollow or lacking punch and loudness? And then finally, high end clarity. Am I getting the clarity and presence that I need, or does it sound dull or distorted and exaggerated? If you answer no to any of these questions, those are signs that you actually need to look at acoustic treatment and in general, the acoustics in your studio. And note just how many of these questions are answered by focusing on placing your setup properly in your room, your listening position and your speakers. I don't know how many times I've mentioned it. I'm going to mention it again. It is the most critical thing to get right, the most critical thing to spend time on in any home studio. And I know it's not easy. It can actually be pretty tricky. There are rules of thumb out there that can help get you in the ballpark, but really nailing it down isn't actually that easy, especially if your room is asymmetrical or somehow odd in some other way, doors, windows in odd places where you don't need them. Yeah, and so what you need is a step-by-step, -step, a systematic process that guides you through finding those ideal positions for your listening position and your speakers. Yeah, so that's why I created the Phantom Speaker Test Workshop. Once again, you can get that completely for free. Check it out at the link in the description. All right, I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some perspective on how to actually think about the questions that you need to ask in order to figure out if you need acoustic treatment. With that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.